Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. We're going to take a look at the scripture. I wanted to focus on the life of Job for a minute and just to um, pull out a few things out of his life, some principles so that you and I can utilize to see how he got his blessing. We know that um, was a rich man. Uh, Job was very rich. Uh, the Bible actually tells us about uh, his wealth before it starts into his uh, testing. And we know that um, the enemy comes and he makes his presentation to God. And the God, God asked him, where have you been? He said, I've been uh, to and fro all over the earth looking. And the Bible tells us that he does that to see whom he may devour. And so he is looking at you and I just as God is looking at you and I. He, um, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I talked about him studying you because the Bible tells us that he knows us so well that he knows the sin that easily besets us. And um, you got to study someone well enough to know what that is. And as a result, he uses it against us. But the Bible tells us that we even overcome that. So I wanted to take a couple of principles out of Job's life because many of us are going through the same thing. Um, not even any anything like what he went through where he lost all of his wealth in a single day, he lost all of his children in a single day, and he lost everything, uh, his health, um, in the next couple of days after that. Uh, so we know that this man is actually despised by all the people making fun, the children made fun of him, and all of that as you study the, uh, the story of Job. It's really a powerful story, but there's a lot of stuff in there, a lot of wisdom. I want to first look and see where where Job was in his relationship with God before all of this started. And the um, Bible tells us, actually, God, it was God that um, made the statement, and that is what we are going to read the message today. God says to him um, uh, that uh, he said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. And so um, we want to know why that statement was made. And uh, that God would um, uh, uh, turn him over to the enemy. When the enemy said in verse 10, says, Has, uh, Does Job, Job fear God uh, for nothing? Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hand and his substance increase in the land. And so we see that um, uh, the enemy recognized that God has blessed this man. He knows it and he knows that there's a protection around him and even his kids that was in a party state that the enemy didn't touch them. And uh, he comes to God and he makes his case. The Bible tells us that um, he's accused of the brethren just like uh, he hasn't changed. And so he comes, he makes a statement, and God makes this uh, uh, profound statement in verse two, 12 of Job chap chapter 1. The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. How did Job get there? How did Job get into the place where he was the grounds, if you will, where he had given the enemy permission to access his blessing to cause tremendous uh, damage in his life. Because uh, Job makes a statement about it. He says that um, all that I have feared, the thing that I have feared, has come upon me. And this is after uh, he had lost all the things that he, he had gained, all of his wealth. Everything, his kids were stripped away from him. And um, tells us in uh, Job chapter 3, for the thing which I greatly fear has come upon me, and that I was afraid of has come unto me. And so we see that um, he was a fearful man, and he was living in a fearful state 
And because he was living in a fearful state, he was on grounds, um, or you want to say he was uh, in the devil's turf, if you will, because the Bible tells us that God makes a statement uh, that, um, you know, which I've uh, said to you guys, behold, all that he has in thy power. And so he got there, Job, living in fear. And the Bible tells us that we ought to walk not in fear. God always comes to his people, fear not. One of the things he said to Joshua, fear not. There's a million scriptures in the Bible dealing with fear. And um, uh, when we are afraid, uh, fate does not work. Our fate becomes short circuit. And when our fate becomes short circuit, the enemy comes in and he begins to attack. And uh, uh, the Bible is very clear that you and I, when we are there, we actually give in the enemy permission to um, brutalize us. You saw what his personality is all about. The Bible tells us what his personality is about. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we know that that's his personality, and that's his character. He can't, he can't do anything else. Um, he can only pretend he comes like a lion. He comes like an angel of light. So we know that he can't do anything um, uh, uh, that he uh, is just a pretender, as you heard me said times. When we are on his turf, if you will, we are open to his attack. And we see that in the life of Job. And he wanted so bad to touch him. And God said to him, you know, he, he's in your hands. I, I, You know, he's on your turf. And so God says, uh, God begins to bargain on his behalf. Don't touch his head. Don't take his life. But he's on your turf. Don't touch his life. And the Bible tells us that God will give us long life. And so God is still protecting this man. If you read the scripture, God was bragging on this man. Even though he was living in a state of fearfulness, God was still bragging on his man, Job. So you and I have to get off of the enemy's turf in order to get the blessings of God in our life. And um, I was on the enemy's turf for many years. I was a pastor, guys. And after I got my came through my divorce, I turned my back on God. I began to live from the flesh. Uh, the Bible tells us that um, we, those that are born again, they are dead to the flesh. And it tells us that we have the authority to let not sin have dominion over us. And when I... Um, lost my marriage, I assumed, I said to myself, that I have nothing else to give. Um, I'm a fake and I, you know, let me use that. And um, I agreed with him and began to turn my life against God and all that I was, um, he had invested in me. And so um, I know in the book of Galatians, uh, Paul talked to the Christians about that, about uh, turning back from grace and going into the uh, uh, law. And so I went back into the world, as they say, and uh, joined the ranks of the backsliders. But God is faithful, for while we were yet sinners, Christ died. And so he, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, kept coming after me. I resisted and fought and wanted to live that life that is of the flesh. And you know what the life of the flesh is all about um in galatians 5 19 to 21 now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality impurities sensuality idolatry sorcery amity strife jealousy fits of anger rivalry dissension division the drunkenness orgies things like these i warn you as i warned you before that those who do such things not inherit the kingdom of god and i was one of those um as I mentioned, I, I turned my back and I began to walk away uh, from God. And um, we know that the Bible says these type of people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I was a part of that. I made my decision because I told him that I will become the best sinner he ever saw. So it was my decision to turn my back on God and to go and walk and live in sin. And God, um, even though I was there, he kept coming at me. And uh, there are times that, um, you know, I I, uh, I knew it and I fought him. I fought him coming and I resisted him. Uh, and so the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 8, 6, 
For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. And so I uh, set my mind on the flesh, and I began to live a lifestyle that was dictated in uh, Galatians chapter 5. And we see that Job, he began to, he was living a lifestyle of fear. And so when he, um, um, when he, uh, the enemy was given vision because of, uh, Job's location, uh, God just pointed out to him and says, Hey, he's in your hand because of this, because God knew he was a fearful man, but yet God still, uh, bragged about him. And we know that these friends of Job came in. And Job started to complain with God, complain to God. His friends come because Job thought that he was living the right life. Everything was okay. His friends came and they were coming at him saying he was a sinner and all that stuff. And he's saying to them, no, guys, I was living, you know, righteously. And all of these things were happening to me. And so he thought that he was um, doing the right thing and, you know, helping the poor, doing all those things that we are supposed to be doing and um, you know these men began to talk to him and they had this argument with all of these friends that he had and so you and I will have friends that will come we know those Christian ones but uh, once you turn your back on uh, the Christian ones you know that there's other friends that you will have and so the friends that I, I, I got was that I started hanging out and um, uh, making friends outside of the church. I want to tell you something about some of my best friends that I I got in my life was from outside the church because inside the church we have those people that were um, really uh, in the dark and, you know, where there's light, there's darkness. And so we know that uh, lots of people that are sick um, spiritually uh, were are in the church and so they behave atrociously. And they don't understand that they're still behaving. They're letting sin have dominion over them. They're not walking by the Spirit. So as we see that this uh, situation with um, with Job, his friends come in, start telling him how bad he is, and so forth. But he, as I mentioned, he was on the enemy's ground. And when the enemy, when you and I are on the enemy's ground, he will he will beat us to the, to the T. I mean, it in my life, when I turned my back, I mean, it was something else. Um, it tells us in Galatians 6, 8, Whosoever sows play, pleases the flesh, um, to whoever sow to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whosoever sow to the Spirit, uh, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So it's by choice where you sow. And uh, Job was sowing even though he was doing the things because he, he was praying to God uh, for his kids. He was praying for protection. You know, he was for them every day, sacrificing um, pre adventure that they, they cursed God when they were partying. And so in this fearful state, he was still praying. He was still getting before God and and uh, uh, praying and, and seeking God's face. But he was living in a state of fear. And where you sow, what you're going to reap. So he literally was reaping what he sowed. And so the Bible tells us that for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And I know the works of the flesh because it's laid out. Worry, all of these things, faithlessness. Um, you know that uh, uh, anger. Uh, all of these things is listed there. So you and I don't have an excuse to, um, to, uh, uh, before God. We can't blame Him for nothing. In other words. So you and I, the Bible tells us, let not sin have dominion over you. And so it is the man's choice. And so it is our choice how we are. So I want you to take a look into your life. And uh, one of the things that you and I are called to do is to take inventory our life. And I want you to take true inventory of your life and see where is it that you are lacking. Is it are you fearful? Are you in anxiety? Because all of those things put you on the ground of um uh, Lucifer has access to you. And God will say the same thing uh, that he said to Lucifer concerning you uh, when he presents, because he's going to present on your case, because the Bible tells us that he goes around looking to see who he may devour. And you don't want God to say, uh, behold, that he is, is in thy power. And so our goal is not to get there, but the Bible tells us we are there. And so 
till you and I take inventory of our life. And I want to show you something happened to Job. Because after his uh, friends came in, everybody talked to him. Uh, we know what the result was. And then God showed up and talked. So we had, uh, it was actually three of his friends that was talking crazy stuff. And then there was a young man in there who had talked some wisdom in there. And then after their conversation, then God came in and began to talk um, to Job. You know, so, uh, uh, but I want to take you guys into this journey and we'll show you where he goes. After God shows up, God begins to talk to him and says, where were you when I began to put all this thing together as far as the earth? Where were you when um, I was doing this and that? Where were you? And God began to uh, really to him. And um, verse 39 in Job makes a couple of statements that you guys need to, to understand. God said this. God says that they are unicorns. Um, will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by a crib? So if God is telling you guys that there's unicorn and there was unicorns, there was unicorns. And so it's not a metaphor. He's telling us, he's talking about all the different animals and stuff like that. He talks about Leviathan. Um, the, uh, the Bible tells us, be, you know, that this creature is alive within and living in the ocean. And I know there's a book that I read many years ago um, that talks about when uh, uh, there's a person on the, uh, that had a relationship with him and uh, um, and when he had a, a bite and had a mate, they killed his mate and he w went away from mankind. But that's another story. Anyway, um, I want to let you guys know that there's a process here with our boy Job. And you and I, when we place ourselves on this path of uh, what was listed in, in Galatians, and we are setting ourselves up for some serious problem, we have to set our minds, he says. And um, you and I have to set our minds. And Job did this. Job set his mind. After God came on the scene, I want to take you guys uh, on what, when God came on the scene and God began to speak to him what happens to brother job as they say job makes a statement he begins to break him down so let me read to you after god finished having his conversation with him let me read to you what uh, job said in job chapter 42 job answered the lord and said no that thou canst do everything um uh, that thou can do everything and that no thought can be withholden from you who is he that hideth counsel out knowledge therefore have i uttered that i understood not things too wonderful for me which i knew not here i beseech thee and i will speak now this is job talking to god he says i will demand of you and declare thou unto you unto me i have heard of thee by the the hearing of the ears but now my eyes see thee so this man, when God showed up in uh, in verse 39, God revealed himself. He has now, he said, I, before my relationship was, I heard about you and I began to, the you know, this relationship with you. He says, now, he says, now I've seen you with my eyes. Now I have some deeper revelation of you, who you are. And as he began to have a deeper revelation of God. What was his, his first statement in verse 6? Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust ashes. And it was so that after the Lord spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said, and God began to now turn to his friends and judge on his friends and declare what they need to do in order to receive their forgiveness. And one of the things that he said was to go to Job, have him pray on you. Once Job prayed for his friends, the blessing of God began to come back in his life. He got his kids back, seven kids. He got his girls back, and he got his wealth double, and he left an inheritance equal to the boys for the girls, and the girls were most beautiful women and so forth. So God restored him based on the fact that this man now had a relationship with God. No longer he turned back to God. And the scripture says, you turn to me and I will. And so I will. And so I love that phrase, and I will return unto you. And so the Bible tells us that we make the choice as to leaving God. Um, the Bible makes a statement now, 
Those who belong to Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. And that is in Galatians 5.24. And so now those who belong to Jesus, Jesus is calling me and I will answer thee. And so when Job called on God, God answered him. And you and I, Ephesians 2.3 says, Amongst them we too all formerly lived in the lust of the flesh. And so our brother uh, Job formerly lived in the flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were nature, by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. And so you and I were amongst that. We turned our back on Jesus Christ. We walked away. Um, you know, but the Bible tells us that you ought to put on the Lord Jesus Christ in, in Romans thirteen fourteen. Put him on and make no provision of the flesh. Job saw who his provider was. He saw who his God was, and the fearfulness walked away as he got a revelation of his God. And now he has this personal relationship with him, and the Bible tells us that he began to walk in the blessing, and the blessing of God began to manifest in his life. So I wanted to leave you guys, talk to you. You and I, um, we are to consider ourselves dead, return to God, and what happens is the the power of the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, the Bible says. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Not just that Jesus made for us, that is a part of it, but the gospel of the kingdom includes stuff like, so you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that Jesus as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too uh, might walk in newness of life. We are a new creature. God forgive me, and I am able now to be restored back unto him. And he says in, in his word, he says, return to me and I will return to you. And he says that, that the sin that has come, that we are dead to it, as Corinthians uh, ten thirteen, where no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and He will let not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will always provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. He will always. He has provided His grace. He has provided His word. He has provided His Holy Spirit. He has provided all of these things. You and I. And I want you guys to know that we are dead to sin and we can live unto righteousness, First Peter 3.24. And our goal is so that we can take away that word where God made that state. Behold, you know, and so that is, uh, 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 as I mentioned, as I started this conversation, this teaching, that that is a found statement from God the Father about his child, even though this child loved him and was praying to him. Behold, all that he has is in your power. And so we want to take away the power of the enemy off of our life. And the Bible tells us how to do that. Is live by the Spirit. But if I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, you will not walk in fear, you will not walk in, in anxiety. But the Scripture tells us how to be anxious of nothing. And it tells us that the Holy Spirit is lit in us. God has not given us a spirit of, but a spirit of, of power and of a sound mind. So we see the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, fullness, gentleness, self-control. Against such thing, there is no law. There is no law. There is no way that the enemy will be able to conquer you. When he shows up and he accuses you, Jesus is going to be there standing because the Bible says that he's there in this courtroom um, saying, no, uh-uh, this one is walking by the Spirit. And the Bible tells us that when we do that, when we are obedient to the Spirit, we have the Spirit man give him prominent over the soul and over the flesh. We'll walk in the Spirit. And as we um, join ourselves in unity, the soul of the man, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prosper. And so then he begins to prosper, you will join with your spirit and your flesh will come into uh, into subjection. Uh, Galatians 5.25, if we live by the spirit, let us walk by the spirit. And so we know, God, that uh, uh, we can come from this place where, behold, uh, you know, 
all that he has is in your power to walking in a revelation of God, knowing who he is, that he is our provider, so that you and I can uh, no longer be in the clutches of the enemy uh, once we have now um, walking by the Spirit, not by the flesh, because we know that the Bible tells us that the war within ourselves is that Spirit and the flesh. They just fight against each other because uh, one of them wants to have dominion over the other. And so it's our choice, the soul part of us, that person, that part of us makes a decision as to who want to have control. And once that decision is made, we will then walk accordingly. We will then do the corresponding actions to fulfill that particular decision that you have made. And so that is what it is. And Job made a decision. He says, now I heard about you. But now I have seen you. Something came to him. He says, I heard about you. I said, I have heard of thee by hearing of the ears. But now my eyes have seen thee. So this is his encounter with God Almighty, his revelation about who God is. And once he saw the power of God, the authority of God his Father, and he knew that all things was in his Father's hand, even the heart of the king. But the scripture tells us, the heart of the king is in the hands of our God. And if the heart of the king is in the hand of God, that means that he will move it. It says like a river. Uh, he will uh, move it to fulfill uh, what God wants for his people. We know that he did that with um, with uh, um, a Pharaoh. We saw that. We read that in the documentation that God did that. And so because God did that, um, he can do it to anyone that is on this earth that is standing there. He says that he can do that for our on our behalf on our behalf. And so I want to encourage you guys to get of or get out of Satan's hands. Don't worry. That's not your thing. God says you ought not to be anxious. We ought not to behave in these fashion. Because if we do, we are simply giving the enemy permission to um take away all the blessings that God has in our life because the enemy stated he says bless them didn't you bless them he's rich um but take away all of that and you'll see that uh, he doesn't care about you at all even his wife comes and says man curse god and die and um but he was still complaining he said no i'm not gonna do that recognize who god was but he got a relationship and revelation about his father and as a result of having that deeper revelation he came back to his father. He repented. He recognized who he was. And he says, Wherefore I hated myself, I abhorred myself, and repent in dust and ashes. So you and I need to repent. And um, God tells us, he says, If you turn to me, come, let's reason together. Uh, let's put our heads together. And he says, Though your sins be as crimson, you know, he tells us that he'll make it white as snow, man. So you and I have a responsibility. If you want to change your life, God says, come. And he said, I will not um, uh, turn my back on anyone that calls on my name. And Job saw himself, had an encounter with God Almighty, saw his wickedness, saw his wicked ways, repented, God forgave him, and God restored him all that he had, double. And so you and I, the Bible tells us God is longing to be gracious to us. I did a study on that. God is longing to be gracious. And I told you what grace means. And so I showed you in the scriptures in the last podcast about the king, the, the, the king of the heart of the king, where its location is and who controls it. So if we know this, um, God gave uh, Job a revelation of he controls all of these creatures. They all um in control of all of them. He's in control of every man, every every one of us. Um uh so his will supersedes all of us. Even Jesus had to come and make that decision. Not thy will, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus didn't want to go to the cross so much that he was sweating blood. So you and I don't have that kind of problem yet. So um Job lost everything, guys. He lost seven children in one day. He lost all of his wealth in one day. He lost everything. He got sickness from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. The only thing he had was his life. 
he was scraping blood, uh, boil on him. Blood was all over him. He scraped yet ashes. This man was a laughing stock. If you study uh, the book of Job, he talks about it. And he was telling his friends, he says, I can't go anywhere. Everyone I used to uh, be this man that people respected. Now everyone is just laughing at me. Uh, children are making fun of me. People are, I mean, the degree of shame that was on him. Yet God came to him showed him who he was, said, I said, I heard about you, but now I've seen you with my own eyes. Now I know you, and I know you to such a degree, and I got a revelation of who you are, that I recognize my wickedness, I recognize my wretched self. I make a confession, and I ask you to forgive me. He says, I'll return to me, and I'll return to you. And you said that you will bless me, and that's what Job did, and that's what you and I have to do. And so I want to show you guys and remind you that you don't have to stay in the place where God has to say to the enemy, Behold, all that he has is yours. And so I know the suffering that I went through and the pain. And uh, when I came back to God, he began to work on my heart, clean me out. I got a revelation of who he is. I'm still getting that revelation. He is restoring unto me all that the enemy has stolen because he said that he will do it. And everything that he has stolen, he has to... According to the book of uh, Verbs, the thief has to restore sevenfold. And so I want to encourage you guys that it is not over yet. Repent and God will so repent and, and turn from your wicked ways. And if you're in fearfulness, you're in wickedness. The Bible tells us that everything that is not a fate is sin. And so you and I have to examine ourselves. And as we examine ourselves, we can then recognize what is it that is holding us in the camp where God has to say, Behold, all that he, he has is yours. You have to look inside of yourself and to identify what it is. Bring it to God. Ask his forgiveness. Get out of the enemy's um, hands so that God can bless you and make you into what he has. Because remember, the Bible tells us that God has plans for us. If God has plans for us, He's waiting for you to make a decision to get out of the enemy's camp um, so that he can begin to execute his plan for your life. I want to thank you for listening and following me uh, here. And I want to thank those that are supporting me financially. I do appreciate it. And I continue to pray that God will bless you and your family and show you who you are in him through Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us that the just shall walk by faith, and it also states that we walk by faith by sight.